What's up everyone, I hope you're doing well and welcome to this brand new episode of the SA Masterclass Road to Kite Loop series. In previous episodes we have been looking at getting ready for kite loops and the exercises you can do. In part number two we looked at sending your first kite loops and possibly even kite loops with a down loop. And in this third part we will be looking at a couple of things like landing bigger kite loops and how you should steer your kite, the timing of your kite loops, which line lengths you should write and what difference it makes, the type of kites that you can send kite loops with and which one is the easiest and last but certainly not least is how to mega loop. Is it really that difficult or is it just really simple? So stay tuned. Bigger kite loops are not easy to land. You come down with more speed and from a greater height, so your down loop and kite steering needs to be on point. When looking at this kite loop I did back in Cape Town, you'll see that after the loop itself, I steer the kite towards the side, 1130 in this case. Like that, I can steer the kite around 12 rather than straight through 12. And by steering at around 12, I maintain lift in the kite and it slows me down a lot more. If I would be landing with my right foot forward, I would steer the kite towards 12.30 first to loop it left around 12. Like that, you'll always land in a stable way. When you're riding smaller kites, the necessity to steer your kite around 12 can and will probably become bigger. Like for instance on this GoPro clip where I'm riding an 8 square meter kite in something like 45 knots, you can really see that I yank the kite very far left before sending it around 12 for my down loop. If I wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have been able to let the kite slow me down enough for a normal landing. As you're starting to pull your kite loops at greater heights, it might be hard to find the right timing on when to pull your kite loop. I would always recommend to initiate your kite loop, so start steering at 80 to 90% of your final jump height. So, if you're going to be jumping 10 meters high, you want to initiate your kite loop at 8 or 9 meters high. Like that, you'll get the perfect timing and the kite won't pull too hard. But what happens if you pull too early? In this video, filmed at Red Bull King of the Air, you will see that I initiate my kite loop at only 50% of my final jump height. That makes that the kite still has a lot of power and is still pulling me up. So therefore, when I steer my kite forward, I get a massive yank. And after that, I have so much forward speed that my line slack, um, I have a little bit of a free fall. I'm kind of used to pulling loops like this. And usually I have the timing right that it just catches me like in this video, but sometimes it can also go wrong. And if you're not expecting a big yank, it can go really wrong. So early, not such a good plan. It's rather safer to pull your kite loop a little bit too late at the apex or just after the apex of your jump, but you will find that the kite doesn't have much power and it will also not loop around that nicely. When I pull kite loops or mega loops, the most impressive moment for me is when that kite is straight in front of you and you're coming in for a little bit of a free fall. But you don't see a lot of people doing this because obviously it's risky. It makes a big difference if you write short lines like in this video. If you write short lines and you pull your kite into that loop, it doesn't have such a long way to travel towards 12 to catch you again. Whereas if you're going to be writing 22 meter lines or 20 meter lines like this video, the kite has to move a lot further back towards 12 and therefore you need to be a lot higher. Height equals risk, so this is a reason why you don't see mega loops where the kite's right in front of a person that often. But what are the actual differences between long and short lines when you're doing kite loops? If you're riding short lines, or the shorter your lines are, the more explosive your pull will be. It's a very short moment where the kite passes for the wind window and therefore you get quite a bit of a hit. There's not much lift in the kite as the same goes for 12 o'clock. 
The kite only passes it for a short moment and therefore your lift up is limited. But the really nice thing is the recovery time of the kite. After the loop, the short lines make for really quick recovery times and therefore you can send it really low and still play it kind of safe. When riding longer lines, your pull will be more consistent throughout the entire loop and you'll get a more of a horizontal displacement. Your lift is going to be much bigger as that kite passes 12 for a longer time, but your recovery time isn't that great as it takes such a long time for your kite to reach back towards 12. So what would you be riding? I really recommend riding 22 meter lines for most of the kite loops, this is a really nice all round setup. If you're very focused on kite loops and want to experiment a little bit, maybe try going down to 20 or 18 meter lines, but I definitely wouldn't recommend going shorter if you don't know what you're doing. I have a full video on long versus short lines on my YouTube channel, I link it above. So in there I really go in depth, but for now I'll leave it with this. Next to the line length, the type of kite that you're riding makes a massive difference on the characteristics of your loops. We're going to narrow it down to three types. The sea kite, the open sea or delta kite, and the bow kite. The sea kite is probably the hardest kite to do kite loops with. It combines a very short and explosive pull during the loop and takeoff with medium recovery times so you definitely want to be advanced to start doing kite loops on these sea kites. The open sea or delta shaped kite is perfect if you're already able to do a little bit of kite loops or just getting started but you want that sportive feel. It combines a medium explosive pull with good lift and therefore it's going to be easier to get the right height for your kite loops and the recovery times are just amazing. Most of these kites will go up super quick, like the GTS, we can send it really low and it does come back up. So really an awesome kite for kite loops. Last, we have the bow kite. This is a very popular kite nowadays, but it wasn't always great for kite loops as it is usually quite slow. In recent years, this has changed quite a bit though, so the newer models can be super fun for it. Take for instance Janek Rogowski on the XR7, he's going crazy on that thing, it amazed me so I actually got myself a pair. <laughs> but to narrow it down, this kite has a massive amount of lift and therefore it's very easy to jump. If you pull your kite loop, the loop, the pull of the loop won't be explosive but rather constant which makes it very accessible and recovery times have become medium to actually quite fast. So. If you're pulling your first loops and you just want to jump really big without getting yanked in two pieces, the bow kite is your kite to go for. And that brings us to the last point in this episode, how to mega loop. It's a question I actually get a lot, but the answer is rather simple. You need to go very high in order to pull mega loop. If you want to get that kite in front of you, you need the height in order to be caught again. But how do you get it that low? Also that is very simple. All you have to do is not steer like this, but rather steer less at a very small angle. As you can see from this GoPro footage, I steer the kite about 40% and I actually depower the kite a little bit just after the kite passes in front of me. This is because the kite needs speed to recover. And if you push the bar out at that moment already, it builds up speed throughout the loop and therefore recovers quicker so it actually catches me earlier. So that's it, just steer less hard and go high. But be careful, if you jump higher there's more risk of injuring yourself so slowly build it up, don't just go straight at it. If all you want to do is get that kite low, remember just grab short lines, that will also do the trick. And that's it for this Road to Kite Loop series. I'll try and bring out a video on rotations later this year. But for now, I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you did, hit that notification bell, like the video, comment if you have questions, and I'll see you on the next one.